pleasure to welcome you in Onto Commons Roadmap webinar. Uh, on the first slide, you see the link uh, where you can find uh, the whole document. Um, it's really a pleasure uh, to have you today uh, with us. Uh, it's opportunity also to discuss the content, to collect uh, your opinion on, on where we are today regarding this document. And you will see at the end of the presentation today, uh, we will invite you uh, also to contribute to the final version of the document. Uh, and we will provide you uh, the opportunity to, uh, to work with us uh, on this document until the end of the project. Next slide. Beside me, I have a pleasure uh, to have um, uh, many colleagues from Onto Commons project who, who are really contributing a lot with the content to the project, uh, but uh, to this document as well. Um, it's based uh, not only on, on participation of uh, Onto Commons Consortium, we had plenty uh, discussions and webinars. Uh, where we had the opportunity with, with hundreds of external experts to discuss all these different topics uh, that we will go through together today. Um, but of course, um, uh, additional input we are going to, to collect and uh, uh, updated version of the document is foreseen uh, by the end of this year. Next slide. Just a couple of words about the project. Uh, Onto Commons is a coordination and support action project. It's a three-year project that started in November 2020, meaning that we are in almost in the final months of the project. Uh, in October 2023, we will finalize it and uh, the final document will be then available to the community. Uh, in, in October this year. Next slide. Uh, it's a common opinion of the community and understanding that data sharing has really a lot of potential within and across different uh, domains and can offer plenty of opportunities regarding innovation in industry. And Onto Commons project uh, has the goals, of course, to support the data sharing and, and interoperability of data between different domains. First of all, we are building community. We have, um, uh, we are involving external experts. We are one of the ways uh, is, is also dissemination like we have today. We are developing uh, Onto Commons ecosystem. I will say some words uh, more later on. We have plenty demonstration cases to prove effectiveness of this ecosystem. We work on harmonizing data documentation through ontologies and taxonomy, which is making the data fair. And uh, this should enable intra and cross domain interoperability. Uh, here you see uh, what are components of ontology commons ecosystem. First of all, it's a set of ontologies having different levels from the top level until the application level. And we have plenty of tools uh, for, for building of ontologies and for data documentation. Not every ontology is a part of this system. And we use just state-of-the-art tools. We are not developing some additional tools. Next slide. Uh, this roadmap uh, considers a number of topics uh, related to the ecosystem and ontology-based data documentation. And within these documents, all these topics are grouped uh, in, in three uh, main groups on ontology foundations, so different levels of ontologies that we will present today, then uh, integrated development environment, including tools for mm. data documentation and uh, development of, of ontologies, 
infrastructures and also uh, the third group uh, is related to industrial impact including marketplaces standardization education and and human resources each of these topics that we present today will address uh, following uh, uh, needs uh, state of the art, where we are today on particular topics, what are currently gaps, where we want to go, what do we consider as a success on a specific topic, and what, do, what does the community propose uh, as recommended action. The next slide. Uh, when we talk about uh, ontology foundation uh, within onto commons uh, we had the target to develop a system with interoperable ontologies based on different levels on top level middle level and domain level these uh, ontologies interoperability should be within the same domains but also across the domains we have a pluralistic approach, meaning that we did not pre-select one specific top level ontologies, but we included several wide accepted top level ontologies. And also we introduced the concept of top reference ontology that should uh, support harmonization and alignment between uh, different top level ontologies and later on we will hear about it more in detail. The next slide. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, we uh, have the goal to develop uh, ontology commons ecosystem and uh, this ecosystem is in extremely important in order to enable industry uh, to uh, develop, maintain, and use of ontologies, uh, but uh, this um, uh, environment should make it easy and efficient to map, uh, to, to map existing data sources with ontological concepts in order to speed up uh, this development and enable really impact uh, in industry. Uh, Onto Commons Toolkit provides specifications both for uh, methodological support for industry-oriented ontology development, but also uh, provides a state-of-the-art tools. Next slide. Current situation by industry regarding ontology-based uh, data documentation and knowledge management is that adoption is still uh, in average seen at low level. And to, to wider this adoption, ontologies, tools, infrastructure, hum, human resources need still to be developed. But uh, what are potential benefits or future benefits for the industry are listed here. And first of all, uh, these are standardized data documentation and fair data within the organization, but of course also across uh, different organizations improved communication within the company, reduced time and, and cost saving, increasing innovation capacity, uh, and optimized product quality and environmental footprint. Next slide. Uh, this is also not related on only to individual companies. There is a huge potential and opportunity to share data between different industries. And this can be supported also by a system of digital marketplaces uh, that can improve the data transfer between different industries and marketplaces. The next slide. Uh, so these are all different topics that we will go through together regarding all these um, uh, um, uh, listed uh, needs and, and, and state of the art gaps uh, and recommended actions. Uh, so there, there, there is really a lot of information collected uh, from the community, and uh, we really hope to have also some time to discuss with you. 
um, in the case that you still see something relevant that is not mentioned in the current version of the document, please feel free uh, to, to write in the chat or, or to contribute directly in this webinar. But you will see at the end, we will provide some additional links uh, where you can uh, really uh, work on, on the improved uh, and updated version of the document. Next slide. So this is uh, basically all for the introduction and I invite uh, the next uh, uh, colleague, the next presenter, it's Emanuele Ghedini from UNIBO, from University of Bologna, who will uh, present us uh, the top reference ontology. Thanks, Nadia. Welcome to our participants. So what is the chapter 3.1 about? It's about the top reference ontology, so the apical part of the of the pyramid in which we try to put together different top level ontologies and to find common grounds in order to uh, facilitate interoperability also um, at, uh, at lower level. As Anadia anticipated, we are dealing with, um, we decided to go for a pluralistic perspective <clears throat> in order to host all the possible approaches to knowledge representation. Next one, please. So what, what, we, what are the needs <clears throat> that we need to address this uh, um, uh, in, in this chapter, we need to cover the gap between human digital tools, so Industry 5.0, something that is under knowledge understandable and processable by digital device and understandable by humans, interoperability between standards, vocabulary, data, and software tools via multidisciplinary uh, approach. We want to um, other needs have a better form for standards and vocabularies, so formalized standards using a logic-based framework easily understandable by human ages, but also by machines. Effective data documentation, we want to provide a methodology for uh, a generic data uh, documentation enabling interoperability, and also uh, provide grounds for knowledge-based reasoning as opposed to generic AI. So we know that one of the drawbacks of AI is the fact that we need to interpret what are the findings and what we uh, try to achieve here so is also to provide knowledge that is understandable uh, by existing scientific discipline and facilitate the analysis interpretation of, of machine results uh, coming from deep learning AI findings. Next one, please. So uh, what, what do we know? We know that uh, there are uh, several top level and mid-level ontologies. There are several landscape analysis, one from Monte Commons project, but also from the Construction Innovation Hub that identifies some of the, of, of the most used top level ontologies that you can find here. We know that top-level ontologies are expressed of many different levels of uh, expressivity and computability, and the most important one is the semantic web uh, languages and the tools that are, have been developed in the past to, uh, to exploit the ontologies expressed in semantic web languages. We know that top-level ontologies are actually used in several projects and initiatives, and uh, we know also that uh, um, there is a mapping between uh, uh, these ontologies but not always practical, uh, usable for practical usage. And we know that there are um, barriers preventing the wider usage of top-level ontologies, mainly by different vocabularies, disciplinary barriers, and initial design effort overhead. And this uh, led to uh, end users that usually develop ad hoc domain application level ontologies, focusing on their single domain without committing to a more general top-level ontology framework. And so creating ontological silo for the knowledge representation that prevents interoperability. Next one. Next one, please. So the gaps that we want to, uh, to overcome are the, uh, the establishment of top reverence uh, uh, to level ontologies, uh, because ontology developers are not investing in the overage of overhead introducing Top level ontologies as a knowledge uh, representation foundation, but we know from the feedback that they are uh, there is a recognized advantage when they are used uh, beyond the scope of a single project. We have cross disciplinary gaps, uh, so people usually do not understand the language used for developing top level ontologies. That they also do not understand the, the how they can be used, uh, so that the, the 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 approach and the architecture using top level ontologies. Uh, and uh, um, and um, another gap is the lack of inter top level ontology connection because we have several top level ontologies expression of different communities that sometimes co commits to to incompatible uh, incompatibility uh, incompatible 
uh, commitments. So we need also to overcome this, uh, this gap. There is a lack of high level tools for top level, mid level ontology engineering. Uh, so I mean, reasoning for levels that are higher than, than, than out, for example, for the validation, the code generation, the co management of uh, the complexity management tools, uh, and, and so on, and the reuse of patterns. There is a lack of computability, computability power. So there is a lack in the development of new algorithm uh, for an HPC solution for symbolic computation. Uh, and um, uh, usually the existing tools impose strong constraint on the expressivity of the ontology in favor of computability. So they're more uh, oriented to the amount of data to be, to be analyzed than the quality of them. And also there is a lack of multidisciplinary competencies from both the domain experts to the, to the ontology engineers uh, that create a, comp a, a bottleneck when one wants to express uh, its own knowledge using uh, a formal presentation coming from an ontology. Next one, please. So how can we define success in overcoming this gap? Well, uh, in terms of applicability and usability, we will find success when we, when we see ontologies used uh, um, in different uh, knowledge domain environments, or when they, uh, when we found uh, multiple interoperability, when we, when we have mutual interoperable lower level ontologies based on this top level. We have success in scalability in if uh, um, if we can if we can see several tools that are that are able to use ontologies based on different expressivity level, not stopping at the LDL uh, level. Uh, the success of enabling cross ontology interoperability is when we found mapping between level and top level ontologies usable uh, um, and uh, uh, mapping relevant mid level ontologies to more than one top level ontology. The success of overcoming current disciplinary gap we will see by seeing non top level or mid level ontology experts using and developing application uh, ontologies using the framework that Onto Commons wants to wants to deliver without the support of high level ontology experts experts at industrial level success of a top level mid level ontology framework can be defined as a capability to enable sharing of data and data reused by different companies for different material products and processes next one so the action push for the adoption of top-level ontologies, so creating, uh, 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 defining an adoption route with good documentation, stimulate communities to work together uh, uh, and adopt a top reference uh, ontologies. So clear communication about what uh, a top-level ontology can do and provide concrete mappings uh, in order to prevent ontology, ontology silence. Scalability. Uh, we want to uh, promote a scalable approach to ontology development and usage, and also promote the development of HPC tools for symbolic based reasoning. Tools. We need to raise the awareness about the need of, for, of tools for ontology development, which is falling short with policymakers and scientists. Education and training. We need to provide a clear documentation about what an ontology can do for you, and also push for education and training of, of experts and domain experts. In fact, <clears throat> we uh, are always dealing uh, as experts with a already established domain-specific classificatory system, the lack of rigorous and consistent logical structure. So what we want to do is to uh, try to be, to respect this existing standard, but also to, to enrich them with the formal structure of the over ontology. Next one. So conclusions, <clears throat> okay. Uh, they are uh, top level ontologies are a way to enhance understanding and interoperability between discipline at human and machine level. The multidisciplinary approaches that are used in ontologies can be an innovation enhancer for industry. The benefit of adopting top level ontologies are not understood by industrial and scientific community up to now. And top level ontologies are a great approach towards a more human centric representation of knowledge that can explore the power of modern digital technologies. And that's all. Thank you, Emanuele, for your presentation. And we are coming to the next presentation, uh, which will be given by Arco Paul Sarkar from ENIT Institution in France. And he will talk about industrial domain ontologies. Okay, thank you, Nadia. Um, okay, yes, so uh, this is work package three uh, regarding the domain ontologies. And we had many tasks regarding the landscape analysis of domain ontologies in the manufacturing and materials requirement for our pilot cases. 
And also we are uh, in the business of putting, doing some harmonization between these ontologies. However, we had many focus group meetings as well as uh, uh, participation in many uh, in global workshop. And so we, we had um, many input from the stakeholders, both internal and external to the project. Uh, so uh, let us see like uh, some of the insight we have gathered for the domain level ontology. Um, and next slide, please. Okay, so what is the industrial need? Uh, for sure that uh, almost 70% responded of our service uh, said that, okay, they are interested into the uh, interoperability of data and they are using some kind of standard. However, the standards has a major overlap between them and, uh, and it, even for the ISO, they have different competing standard for manufacturing domain and the manufacturing and material domain. Um, also, this is a um, industrial problem and uh, that uh, how we can bring in the different perspective we have for many different application of the industry and, and the domain. And uh, uh, for sure, uh, the industries understand that uh, the, the top level ontologies are required to, uh, to have some kind of interoperability between these domain level concept. However, the technical complexity of the top level ontology, they want to avoid. Um, uh, so the developer uh, should be able to use the domain ontologies without understanding the uh, complex top level ontology concept. Um, also, uh, there needs to be more input from the, from the domain experts in the ontology development. And that's what the industry feels. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, yes, so this is a state of the art uh, from our landscape survey. Uh, of what is, I mean, uh, the usage of uh, top level ontologies and uh, also standards in, uh, I mean, in the domain ontologies. Also the fairness and maturity of the existing ontologies. Next slide, please. Okay, so the gaps are, of course, I mean, I'm just mentioning the important one here for the lack of time, that, uh, that there needs to be uh, some kind of domain reference ontology for different domain, but not, I mean, also it needs to be defined that uh, what are the important domain uh, can cover the areas of manufacturing and materials. Um, uh, there is a lack of standardized methodology and tools for ontology development. I mean, especially domain uh, ontology, but then it will be covered in the work package for more. Um, another important point is that, uh, of course, ontologies are developed by both ontologists and the computer science experts. So I mean, as an information model, however, they needs to be seen as a conceptual model which can capture the knowledge of the domain more. Uh, ontology is, uh, needs to be sustained. This needs to be uh, kind of maintained for prolonged use and also needs to be updated whenever the domain perspective changes. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we need to know that how an ontology can be evaluated for uh, for before using. Uh, so there needs to be some standard method for evaluating ontology. Next slide, please. So according to us, uh, this slide is a little short, and the, but uh, the, um, according to us, the definition of success, uh, okay, there are some information missing here. But uh, let me summarize that uh, that it of course it critically depends on the adoption of the community. So we will call the, the ontologies as successful. It, it is it can really help in um, providing the interoperability of the data in the industrial value chain. Uh, the quality of the ontology needs to be evaluated uh, not uh, with some metrics or 
um, its ability to answer competency questions as such, but also how well this, uh, this concept are modeled uh, uh, with the foundational concept and, and how well they can capture the perspective of the domain. Some of the example we have given that what we consider success in the domain ontology, for example, Lobio Foundry, the, there is an effort in the uh, for United Nations Environment Program. Also, financial industry business ontology, FIBO, is a major success being adopted by many financial institutes. And for uh, for industry, ISO 15926 is uh, has a life cycle data for process plants, including oil and gas production facilities, which we consider as a successful implementation of domain ontology. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so what are our recommended action? First of all, uh, uh, we need to have a standardized ontology engineering steps uh, for the domain ontology development. This will come mostly in the next work package. Uh, to develop some good domain ontology, we need to have some standard and coherent top-level ontology and mid-level ontology concept with an interoperability between them. Um, there needs to be a kind of balance between these ontological theories and also the domain practices, which comes from the bottom up, from the data. The fairness of the ontology is extremely important, so they need to be maintained uh, uh, in some kind of ontology portal. Um, um, and uh, uh, while developing domain ontology, some uh, the existing domain-related standards also need to be, I mean, considered because they have wide I mean, acceptance from the domain. Um, it, uh, to find the right ontology, we need to classify the domains. I mean, this is very important so that we can classify the ontologies according to them. And uh, lastly, we need to uh, bridge the gap between domain experts and their understanding of the ontology so that they can accept and adopt the ontology for, for their uh, purposes more. Next slide, please. Yes, so, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, success, uh, of, um, I mean, as we say, that success of the ontology needs to be ensured by the right choice of development process. Um, ontologies need to be viewed as an asset of the organization. So once it is developed, it will need to be maintained just like any other asset. And for that, as I said, uh, uh, you need the right uh, infrastructure for that. And a common set of um, um, domain reference ontology needs to be there with well documentation and fairness. And finally, uh, uh, the collaboration between the domain expert and ontology in development is extremely important from our point of view. That is all. Thanks, Simon. Uh, we are then coming to the next topic uh, on industrial domain ontologies and uh, no, no, uh, ontology commons ecosystem. Sorry, toolkit and Hedy will present it. Thank you, Nadia. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm presenting on behalf of my my colleague Lan Yang. So uh, the ontology commons ecosystem toolkit uh, will consist. Uh, of methodologies, references, and specification for tools, uh, guidelines for implementation. So the idea is to present, uh, let's say, uh, an industry-oriented ontology development, maintenance, and application uh, ecosystem that include methodology and tools. So in the next slide, um, we try to present the industrial gaps so we, um, let's say, uh, thanks to the community, to the different surveys and workshops and webinars, we collected a lot of, um, let's say, inputs from the stakeholders and we, uh, this input can be um, structured in two different needs. 
one or the functional ones and the non-functional ones. So as it needs from uh, services perspectives as a functional, so uh, what we collect is that people are um, interested in integrating a set of components that can perform specific tasks in ontology engineering and use. So people would like to have, uh, let's say, integrated components and not uh, silos of softwares and, 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 and services for ontology. Uh, from the non-functional services, uh, what people are in from industry are looking for is to have more flexible and open and robust architecture, uh, interoperable interface between different tools, uh, collaborative settings, and especially sustaining the fair principles for ontology publication uh, 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 after development. So how to drive the 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 ontology development process with fairness till the publication. Uh, next slide, please. So regarding to that, uh, the state of the art that we uh, draw uh, uh, from the community uh, <coughs> uh, was uh, regarding the methodology and the services uh, of each phase of the ontology development. So um, what we uh, try to analyze is how to find a common workflow for ontology development uh, in the state of the art as methodology. So uh, we have identified different methodologies and um, our uh, OCHES to ontology commons ecosystem toolkit uh, reuse many of the core components of, the, of those uh, methodologies, as uh, you can see, uh, there is uh, four main steps for ontology development, and the, the, the final one is the use. So it starts by a requirement specification, implementation of ontology publication and maintenance, and then there is the use of the ontology. And uh, with the community, we try to uh, identify the different services that uh, are needed uh, regarding each phase, as you can see in the graph here, that allow us to define uh, the, the requirements in terms of services for each phase of ontology development. So in the, in the next slide, we present the gaps uh, uh, regarding the tools that we have in the state of the art, and we try to analyze them uh, uh, regarding those different services and uh, phases of ontology development, and we can highlight the limited tool support. So uh, for concept identification, constraint specification, test specification. So all this first phase of the ontology development and also the visual drafting, navigating ontologies and ontology visualization. So there is a lack on the first phases of ontology development regarding the requirement specification and the, the, the visual drafting of the ontology. Uh, then uh, there is also a gap on the ontology validation. So uh, the ontology engineering process, um, in most cases, does not include the generation of linked data, APIs, and, and so on. So there is a gap in terms of uh, validation uh, tools in order to validate regarding the application but also there is also a gap in, in terms of validation from conceptual perspectives. Uh, also, uh, 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 an highlighted gap is the need of integration among existing tools or tool chain, uh, because there is different tools in different stages of or phases of ontology development, but there is uh, no chain of value of this tool that we can navigate from one to another one. So there is lack of integration. So it uh, it makes the the life of ontology the uh, the life of ontology developer uh, a little bit uh, quite uh, difficult. And then also uh, unsatisfactory and unsustainable solutions. This is what also we uh, um, we noted from the stakeholders regarding the existing tools in ontology development, like the 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 the. Uh, let's say the not sustainable thing and maintenance uh, and the robustness and the large scale use of, of I mean, uh, of this tool. So this is 
uh, four main gaps that we identified in, in the existing tools uh, in general for the whole ontology development process. Um, next slide, please. So the definition of success also, this is what we, we build with the community in terms of, okay, if we want an ontology commons ecosystem toolkit, so how to make it successful. So first thing is to, uh, uh, to make those uh, um, services uh, can fulfill the functional requirements of, of on, I mean, and, and the non-functional requirements that we defined at the beginning. Uh, in terms of components, uh, in terms of integration, and uh, how to support the entire life cycle of ontology. So from the requirements till the use of the ontology, how we can have a tool chain that can support all of that, and also uh, allow domain experts to create uh, uh, documentation of ontologies, but also document ontology based on the recommendation and also use ontology to document data. Uh, next slide, please. So regarding to that, uh, the, the main recommendations uh, in order to, uh, to reach a successful tool chain for ontology development, uh, the first thing is to refine methodologies and tools, especially for ontology validation. So what, uh, what is needed and uh, recommended is to provide recommendation on principles, best practices, and methods for the creation and maintenance of ontologies, uh, to also uh, provide a methodic methodological approach for coordination amongst tool providers, uh, also leverage industrial ontology portal and ontology adoption, so what we need also to to provide a common portal for, for uh, industrial ontologies uh, and also uh, create user-friendly tool chain for reference implementation and, and in the survey, the first uh, uh, um, requirement that and uh, need from people as, 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 as a non-functional is the visualization. So what we need, I mean, what we recommend is to have a framework and reference implementation that will help in order to offer practical and, and user uh, a friendly method for using data across domain and industry and also allow uh, ontologies and interoperability. So this is for recommendation and to conclude. So uh, in order for, I mean, the, the community for uh, and the industry to develop, maintain and use ontologies, we need a, a powerful and well-supported toolkit and within the ecosystem, industries can benefit from an integrated development environment. So with a set of good practices, recommendations, and to have a, a, a full package, uh, I mean, including methodology and the needed tool for each phase. That's all from the tool chain. Thank you, Hedy. And we are coming to the next presentation on infrastructure and will be given by Florina Piroi from Teobin. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon for me, too. Uh, I will show you a little bit um, what are the uh, gaps and in the industry needs uh, in relation to the uh, infrastructure necessary for the on the commons and OCS toolkit. Um, just to give you an idea, infrastructure, by this word, we, we understand uh, a set of systems and services that are basic and absolutely necessary for an entity to function. And an entity can be a country, can be an organization, can be an institution. Now, um, in the scope of the OntoCommons project, we limit this notion of infrastructure to research infrastructures as defined um, uh, in the EU regulation that, in, uh, that, that establishes the Horizon Europe program. And furthermore, we look at uh, components for, for um, um, at the following components of the infrastructure, namely hardware, physical networks. Um, we look at software stack available uh, for, for the tools that the Auto Commons community needs, services and API definition, and also at organizational aspects, which need uh, to be considered like what are the rules of participation to such an infrastructure, what are the financial regulations, and how can we maintain, educate, and have a sustainable um, set of human resources to, to keep such an infrastructure uh, 
uh, long-term uh, viable. So um, in, in the onto common setting, uh, the infrastructure for, for this community must be a base for, uh, for providing the functionality of the ecosystem of ontology engineering tools um, it, it should give standardized uh, data documentation tools and processes. It should, uh, it should be able to support secure communication between stakeholders and uh, must uh, ensure secure data sharing or integration. This is, of course, just a very short list of all the, the uh, list of uh, items that an infrastructure in Onto Common should cover. Next slide, please. So uh, we have abstracted uh, the industrial needs for an infrastructure uh, starting from all the other uh, areas uh, and work packaging onto commons. And we concluded that uh, there is uh, absolutely a, necessary, a necessity for having secure collaborative tools for multiple stakeholders where the data exchange through standards can be uh, done securely and, and safely without leaks. Uh, leaks data collection uh, documentation should be uh, done by standards uh, agreed by the community. And uh, this should also be supported by um, various tools uh, as, uh, as uh, automated and as transparent as posi uh, possible. And there should also be some digital market availability uh, for finding the data. Um, another um, Industrial need we detected, especially when talking with uh, the demonstrator case, uh, in, in the project, uh, there, there is a need for interactive visualization of data, which um, contributes to understanding the data itself, to analyze it, identify the trends, and um, there must be, it must be possible not only to look at the data, but also to interact. Um, there is uh, further two needs which I don't uh, detail very much because these are occurring also in other chapters of our roadmap. Data quality assurance and analytics and data validation are uh, absolutely must. And there, there is a need for trustworthy data repositories and trusted uh, computations once data is uploaded from these repositories. Now, um, I have kept in my presentation the state of the art part because um, they are, they, they, what is available there in terms of infrastructure in the, among the lines I have presented are very isolated solutions for very little parts of, uh, of an, what constitutes an infrastructure. So I'm presenting you now the gaps uh, we identified. So first of all, we see that there is a low maturity level of available infrastructure comp components. There are most of the time you have prototypes. Even the protege uh, environment, which uh, allows for collaborative uh, um, ontology editing, is, is still a very academic uh, project. Um, then we also see that there is a missing fundamental, uh, uh, a lack of fundamental low level ontologies um, and although uh, you might find this trivial, but they are absolutely necessary and uh, central to, to having correct standards and contribute uh, critically to the trustworthiness and quality of the MLOs and the TLOs. Um, then we also see a gap in, in the provisioning of ontology data. Uh, there are not very many uh, services on APIs for maintaining, creating uh, ontology data, updating it. Um, there are uh, several um, uh, insular solutions here and there, but nothing very uh, uh, that scales. Um, and most of them, most of these services, when they are available, uh, they cannot be used or very or can be used very difficult outside of the environments they have been created for. So the next gap is, of course, in this respect, the fed, uh, we need we need a federated and interconnected virtual research environment. We call it a research environment, but it's of course specific to the ontology areas. And this environment should should be able to scale to to uh, manage uh, the fact that hardware is evolving, and it should be able to to provide fair services and uh, the data and management and curation security are also um, um, integrated in these uh, federated environments. Um, we also see a need of uh, um, end to end. Uh, application demonstrators from the uh, 
from the very start of, of creating an ontology or, or uh, using an existing ontology to its application in some certain domain. Um, in the same in the same idea, there are the, we, we could not uh, find well defined uh, pipelines that define routine processes in in the work of an uh, of an ontology engineer. Um, and of course, now this is general for many of the uh, infrastructures. There, uh, there is insufficient support for transfer from the research and development departments to uh, stream uh, streamlined activities into infrastructure operations. Next slide, I think. So, uh, in in our view, a definition of success uh, with regard to an infrastructure, we we look at the number of quality assured concept spaces, uh, number of federated institutions that provide these mentioned spaces, mentioned services, um, how many federal virtual uh, environments are available, and how many. Uh, um, uh, entities are contributing to these environments, end-to-end um, -end demonstrators and domain coverage, and of course, sufficient funding streams that are then uh, supporting these uh, infrastructure um, as, as institutional operations. Next slide, please. So um, the list of recommended actions is, it may look short, but it actually complements all the other recommended actions uh, in, in the other chapters of the roadmap. Um, so first of all, uh, we, we, we think that development of low level ontologies like, like uh, a uniform metric system or temperatures or uh, simple conversion tables from, uh, from one, uh, uh, unit to another uh, would help a lot to avoid misinterpre misinterpretation of implicit knowledge, which often comes with the uh, with the ontology creation at uh, higher levels. Um, we recommend that secure platforms for ontology data creation, provisioning, and exchange are are um, created or or uh, further developed. And we also advocate for uh, for virtual research and innovation environments um, in the domain of uh, material modeling and that should be used as a blueprint for for the domains covered uh, in Auto Commons. Um, so, in our um, in conclusion, uh, I summarize a little bit what I've said before. Um, we think low-level data and metadata representations are available, but not very well uh, 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 visible in, in, uh, to everybody. Uh, we, we also think that workflows for data processing integration documentations are available, but again, not very visible to the material mod, uh, modeling uh, community. And we definitely need uh, tools and layers of tools for services, data provisioning, uh, computing infrastructures, et cetera. Um, and we also think that data markets and tool spaces will interoperate seamlessly, uh, seamlessly and transparent to a user. So thank you very much for, for your attention and uh, contact us if you have questions. Thank you, Lorina. We are coming to industrial application and presentation will be given by Umut from University uh, Innsbruck. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, okay, I see there is some issue with the formatting of the slides, although I see on my computer quite fine. But um, uh, let me introduce first what are we doing. So, industrial uh, applications, basically what we have, what we have seen so far from different work packages, and um, these were of course very specific uh, to the specific tasks. And what we now uh, try to cover is uh, how, how these things reflect on a high level uh, from an industrial uh, point of view. Yeah. And uh, what I will present is the same structure, uh, same high level structure as what you have seen so far, uh, gaps, state of the art, uh, definition of success, et, et cetera. Uh, but the, each item is also structured uh, within uh, the section in uh, whatever they relate to, if they relate to people, if they relate to data, or if they relate to processes. The input we collected from different events so far, so all these um, items or uh, roadmap uh, points we will have 
uh, they are not uh, things we taught off, but they are mostly things we compiled from the uh, from the industrial stakeholders in our project, uh, which we call demonstrators. Now they already mentioned a little bit. And uh, we had several demonstrator workshops and events, plus some deliverables we created uh, based on their input. And these uh, stuff basically uh, led to the development of this uh, roadmap section industrial need. Next slide, please. Yes, so uh, you might be intimidated by the uh, amount of text on the slide, but please do not focus on reading it uh, and more listening it now. This is intentionally too much text uh, that uh, in case that the slides will be distributed later, then you will have some time to uh, read. So the major industrial needs we see is uh, here the uh, communication between different stakeholders. So we always see ontologies uh, primarily in terms of communication uh, of uh, agents so and agents can be uh machines and also but also people and actually uh having a common language across an organization or between organizations uh can be achieved uh, is needed basically in the industry um what we've seen also from our stakeholders is that uh, best practices for data model and governance as well as modeling tools are uh, needed these are quite hard to apparently find currently um Ontologies needed to be well documented uh, and maybe as complex as needed and as simple as possible, in a sense that people can easily understand it uh, and apply it. Um, this also, of course, then in, in the future uh, will improve the reusability. The more standardized uh, this documentation, data documentation is uh, via ontologies, uh, the better. From a process point of view, we have um, time savings in industrial process, of course, from an industrial point of view, this is the most one of the most important things. This also is uh, obviously heavily related to saving of costs. Um, so in any way, if we can automate some of the things that we are doing manually, or we can uh, improve reuse uh, of resources, this will anyway uh, yeah, help. This is a need uh, from industrial point of view that they're saving the time, and this will help uh, towards this. And the uh, uh, other basic need to be seen is that the avoidance of physical testing. As you can see, I mean, the ontocommons focus is um, manufacturing and materials, and uh, these things are quite expensive to, to work with uh, most of the time. If you want to, if you have to test an airplane all the time on a real machine, then you would have, uh, uh, you might encounter financial issues uh, some, when something small goes wrong. So if we can actually also go towards the digital twins, we really need to uh, find ways to avoid physical testing according to our uh, stakeholders. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, state-of-the-art, I will go quite fast. Uh, so there is, I mean, industry is using the existing stuff already. So there is uh, some extent the needs are addressed, but there are still major, uh, some major issues. Um, so, and the issues we will come in a minute, but uh, what, we, what the state-of-the-art uh, offers is that, um, from an ontology perspective, many of the well-known, uh, let's say, de facto standardized or actually standardized uh, ontologies are actually used. Uh, you can see some of the, for example, top-level ontologies here or, uh, or middle-level ontologies. And from a domain ontologies perspective, what we have seen from our stakeholders is that many of them actually go in-house uh, development way uh, with some reuse of existing ontologies. But this is obvious that there are some, there is still some gaps. We will come in a minute uh, in terms of domain ontologies for different domains. From a tools perspective, Protege is mostly adopted, but this doesn't mean that they are happy with it. Uh, again, we will come in a minute. And we also see widespread of triple stores used across uh, our stakeholders. Next slide, please. Um, on top of that, okay, you skipped, I think, one slide. Yes, uh, on top of that, we have uh, standards like Shackle and also RDS, so many semantic web technologies from W3C. They are well adopted and they've been around for 20 years already. So uh, there is not much problem from that side, uh, from the usage adoption of it. Um, and um, there are still some needs and regarding uh, interability and reusability are particularly related to fair, fair principles. Uh, as I mentioned regarding reusability, that was also a need. And this, in the state of the art, there is some adoption of fair principles, but uh, at, we have seen that it reached to certain limit uh, most cited uh, data privacy and property data issues that needs to be clearly addressed in the state of the art. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, again, the gaps. So the, the major gap 
uh, we can focus on the first two and three, uh, maybe, uh, regarding people. So learning barriers for semantic technologies are quite high in the industry. So maybe we should go back and think also from a little bit earlier uh, regarding the education of uh, people, in a sense, if we should put more focus on uh, into this. The, and this leads, of course, that if you have less people understanding the stuff, then it costs more. Um, there is a relatively high cost of ontology development. Uh, this is also obviously related to the difficulty of the maintenance of them. Right? So uh, it's also very hard to bring non-ontology non experts into the game. And these three things actually are like have a evil synergy that uh, hinders the development in a sense. Uh, from a data perspective, again, the documentation issues and also lack of comprehensive domain ontologies in MMBP domains that we mentioned that that's also leads many stakeholders to actually develop in-house ontologies and hinders the standardization a little bit, although pluralistic approach is good, but if they stay under organization behind organization doors, then this could be a problem. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, and from the FAIR perspective, again, there is an understanding issue with the FAIR principles and their benefits, uh, obviously. So th there must be strong arguments of using them with many demonstrations. And uh, from a pro process perspective, I think the methodologies are not well adapted, but we have seen so far that people do some uh, ad hoc approaches and standards and gu guidelines are quite uh, not uh, sufficient uh, at this stage. Next slide, please. Uh, from a tools perspective, again, we have issue with the tools. Uh, it was also mentioned in the Work Package 4 presentation in the ecosystem presentation. Um, there is a maturity issue of collaborative ontology development tools. And uh, also, as I said, people use Protege, but this is mostly because they don't have anything else to use. And uh, user friendliness of these uh, existing well-adapted tools are not uh, very ideal. So uh, this is also one of the uh, big caps. Also at the end that we have still, even they're not perfect, we have some tools for ontology development and their users to some extent, but deploying them and like populating with instances, again, tool support is also not very, very good that we have seen from our uh, stakeholders so far. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, for the definition of success, uh, there is an improved, uh, so stakeholders will think that they will be successful if there's an improved communication within the company, if they achieve standards at data documentation, they save time and cost, again, related with the industrial needs, of course. Um, if they can optimize their product quality and environmental footprint, also very altruistic uh, motive. And uh, and especially for small uh, companies, uh, for small and large companies alike, but particularly for small companies, it is important to uh, automate, automate things as much as possible and uh, being smarter and more efficient to gain competitive uh, advantage then this would be the definition of the success. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, what we recommend for this, so definitely we should think knowledge engineering education again, starting from the universities. Um, how can we bring people from different uh, fields, different perspectives into the knowledge engineering to some extent? I mean, not everybody has to be an expert in first order logic, but uh, everybody could participate somehow to ontology development to some extent. And how can we do this? This is important. We have to demonstrate concrete examples to bring business people on board, right? That how ontologies and semantic technologies help. Networking, and uh, this is also important to increase awareness. Um, yeah, standardization. Again, we need to really take action on this, uh, that we have different domain level and top level standardization acti activities. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Yeah, for fairness, again, this boils down to the demonstration of fair benefits, as I mentioned, um, provide methodologies uh, and so streamline methodologies and guidelines for ontology development and use. Um, and particularly, I mean, everybody likes a research project, but we should also find time and funding to actually develop good tools and support them uh, to help people. So development is also important, not only the research in terms, particularly in terms of tools. Next slide, please. Just to conclude. Um, yeah, four points are super important, what we have seen. Tools support and guidelines for particularly also for collaborative development, knowledge engineering education uh, for different target groups, alignment with standards, and also demonstration of fair benefits to break the prejudice of uh, particularly companies that their data will be open and everybody can use it, etc. if it's fair. So we have to break also this prejudice with demonstration of uh, good practices. 
I think that's it. Sorry, I over went a little bit on time, but not too much. Thank you. Thank you. It's fine. And we are coming to the next presentation that will be on standardization. And Silvana Muchella from Prosthety Company will present it. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you, Nadia and everybody. Um, so indeed, in the roadmap, there's a 5.2 chapter on standardization, which is uh, crucial at the moment because we've been extremely lucky in Onto Commons because we're smack bang in the middle of the uh, new European standardization strategy that was then um, pulled out in February 2022. So we're lucky in the sense that we're a CSA that pulls out demonstrators. As you can see here, there are 22 of them to which I have considerations around standardization and ontologies. So I think from this slide, I'd like to pull out from the strategy, a nice sentence, which is Europe must be a rule maker and not a rule taker in terms of international rules and standards. And this is something we certainly are drawing upon within the Onto Commons uh, project and the roadmap. So moving on to the state of the art, uh, ontologies play a fundamental role contributing to the harmonization and interoperability and interoperability is key here that we're going to see uh, in a moment in the other slides as well, which can offer this better categorization of information and process efficiency and starting off in 2020 and now uh, we're in 2023 we've made incredible progress thanks to the demonstrators for the harmonization feature now the industrial needs uh moving on the uh we can see that the processes require stronger integration of multi-domain stakeholder clusters now, we see within standard, standard developing organizations that as a, and it should be promoted as a key enabler for industry, but can reinforce the links between research and innovation. And this is exactly what the demonstrators uh, are doing uh, with the cooperation, also with the national uh, standards bodies, too, that we can see, we're going to see in the next slide. So, Umut, Describe the demonstrators before. If you see here, there's a snapshot of all 22. Initially, there were 11. And uh, in fact, the consortium worked extremely hard to bring on board uh, additional demonstrators. And if you see, this is the mapping of the standards and ontologies currently used by the industrial use cases. Clearly, what SDOs need are use cases and best practices. So thanks to Onto Commons with this effort, they can then help better identify the, the requirements. And if you want to know more information uh, about any of these demonstrators, they're all online, but please contact us at the info at ontocommons.eu that you see here. And what we described earlier, the connection between the national uh, standards bodies, you see DIN is extremely uh, listed here on different demonstrators working hand in hand clearly with uh, ISO. So moving on there with some gaps, I think the one that I want to highlight here uh, is that the features around software systems that have different representations of data and different digital information where it's difficult to reuse. So this is clearly where the interoperability uh, is crucial. Um, Highlighted also in the EC scoping study, you can see here, this is online for the development of a code of practice to link the researchers to standardization onto commons was used as an example um, and a best practice case, if you like, thanks to the demonstrators that were there where we saw uh, the linkages between industry and research. The definition of success uh, next slide is that Onto Commons can contribute to sharing the new knowledge in the industrial ecosystem through the best practices gathered by the Onto Commons ontology ecosystem, plus the demonstrators, plus the training materials that are going to be delivered by the end of the project's lifetime, where we see today that there is a lack of standards experts uh, and the and Europe is keen on developing the next generation of standards experts and certainly onto commons can contribute there 
For the recommended actions, I want to take up one of these specifically. There are eight, but I won't go through them all. From our perspective, demonstrating smart standards with end users through dedicated interoperability testbed frameworks. This is something, this is a feature that's coming up again and again. Uh, also, we're using prototypes, testing, and this is the terminology that people want to see and take up because if I have a use case and then I can put that in and test it, that then moves forward clearly for industry as well. Conclusions, then, um, I want to just mention that, uh, as we've seen before, it con through contributing through leveraging on its demonstrators helps get, gain a better understanding of industrial communities' requirements, and we lower the knowledge gap by sharing best practice coming in, coming in through the demonstrators, through organised workshops. To... I wanted to give some visibility to our uh, experts because in addition to an SCSA with a very strong component of demonstrators, there are also some high level experts and we've um, listed a few of them here who contribute directly to the standardization dialogue. And this is extremely valuable because they can see what's going on from the demonstrator perspective. And then there are some interviews online that we encourage you to go and read. What can be improved? So there's our survey. We'd like to hear from you who you can try and support the um, standardization chapter, but then also further reading uh, and projects it's good that Onto Commons has very good relations with ongoing standards efforts uh, in Europe and projects. So we've listed a few here. And uh, what will be published in the next few weeks is a landscape of ontology standards. This is thanks to the work of Arco, who you heard through before, and Hedy, and a set of other experts working around ontology. So that will be published soon through the Stan ICT project. There have been five fellows who have received funding around um, semantic interoperability or ontologies. And then we encourage you also to read the reflections from the Stanley CT report that was published early this year on recommendations too. And I think with that, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Silvana. And we're coming to the next presentation on knowledge management translator for industry commons and it will be given by Gerhard Goldbeck uh, from GCL company in the United Kingdom in England. Yes, thank you Nadia. Uh, so uh, the translator, yeah, if you click again, I think this is probably uh, is uh, um, now is focusing on the skills. Uh, so this is really a role that bridges um, some of the gaps, um, in particular between the communities that have different uh, backgrounds and different semantics. So typically, these types of translator roles um, deal in particular with the, the gap towards um, industrial and, and business side, and then the experts in particular fields. There are ones in materials modeling, there's one in uh, the area of data analytics. And uh, here we're looking at this role of the knowledge management translator for semantic knowledge management. Next slide. Um, in terms of the state of the art, we have already made uh, some progress in, in the project to at least define what this role is and, uh, and even uh, define the sequence of six steps of such a translation process. And this uh, you will find in, in the white paper that is mentioned here. The picture just shows um, the first step of this, the step one to identify the case and elaborate on the benefits of adopting semantic technologies, which is of course very fundamental here um, to the success of that role. The next one. Uh, industrial needs are there, uh, as we have heard from many other presentations already, and so it's basically here a recap on the skills and capabilities in industry. Um, and of course, you need to get the implementation done, but we also have to take a step back, and this is where the translator comes in, to even um, further elaborate what is the um, the, the benefit and what uh, that can be derived and sort of make really the case for 
the investment into further work in the ontologies and on uh, the staff for that. What is uh, the information? What do you expect uh, that can be expected? And what are the best practices of actually carrying on, carrying out this type of work and uh, as a translator? What we have is um, already linked to leading experts and uh, yeah, like a, a first aid kit, I think from, uh, it could also be described what the ontocons uh, uh, can deliver at this stage. Next. Um, so this um, um, white paper also includes a job description. I'm not going to uh, read through that. And it's also in fact a bit longer in, in the actual document. But it's all about uh, a person being a good auditor and a benefits advisor and having the right technical uh, project management uh, uh, skills and also independence of giving that advice. And next one. Uh, however, there are uh, very important gaps in terms of training and professional development. We, again, we've, we've heard that. Uh, we, we, we need to establish a collection of training materials and, uh, and also advise on continuous professional development. Translators quite often uh, come from um, either specifically, uh, let's say, in the, the data semantics communities or from the, the, the business communities and learn vice versa more to bridge the gap towards the, the, the business needs or the data needs uh, respectively. Um, so the, the success is then given by having the um, training materials and the established professional development for that, building a community of experts and, uh, and the knowledge management translator become a, a known and valued role in industry, basically accessible to industry uh, at uh, uh, the press of a button, uh, ideally. So the the recommended actions are um, to establish the translator role for the comparison of different data processing technologies. Um, uh, sorry, the tools. Uh, so the, the tools um, would be would be important in terms of not just the technical tools, but but the tools that that really point out the that the strong strong points and the benefits of of ontologies in. Uh, and using semantic technologies, uh, along with the best practice guide um, to make the work transparent and fair interoperable with existing standards and trackable, then um, we need to build up the community. And here working with the sister project, don't oh, that's the, the um, industry commons marketplace is important because at a marketplace is where you would then expect to find uh, uh, translators to support uh, organizations to enter into these projects. And so that's where the community is built. Then initiating training schemes on top of what on Commons is delivering in terms of the toolkit um, for um, further work and further professional developments. So um, tr literature training, forums, uh, self-training, and we are also um, calling for the partners to get together uh, and apply, for example, for a uh, Maurice Lutkowska Curie action, uh, which will be for training the new generation, next generation of knowledge management translators. And um, just in terms of conclusions and outlook, uh, we have to define the role. Um, and now we're also going to run a second expert workshop at the end of the month in a, just over a week's time uh, to prepare a second white paper with, uh, with the findings from that. And there will also be um, discussions around that role at the EMMC 2023 International Workshop and the Onto Commons Workshop, uh, second workshop, uh, the global workshop in June. Thank you. Thank you, Gerhard. And we are coming to the next presentation, ontology-based digital marketplaces. And it will be uh, given by Joanna Morgado from Fraunhofer EVM.
Thank you, Nadia, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so very, very briefly, uh, digital marketplaces are essentially trading platforms that facilitate materials and manufacturing innovation. And I mentioned here materials in manufacturing innovation because this is the domain of interests of Onto Commons, and they do so by easing the access to other sources uh, such as software, data, and expertise. So essentially, the marketplaces provide you a platform, an infrastructure that you as a user can access to find or um, the simulation or software that you are interested in, the expert that you are interested in. You can also run your own workflow within this platform. But on the other hand, you can also use uh, integrate your own application within this marketplace and make it available to the community. Within moments, um, we are fostering the uh, collaboration between the marketplaces and uh, between the marketplaces and on the commons uh, community. And uh, we are trying to understand also how we can improve interoperability between these different uh, infrastructures. And ontologies can be used in digital marketplace to enhance the meaningful exchange of products and service, achieve standardized representation of information uh, like the data sets, but also about the infrastructure. And in the end, ultimate goal will be to um, facilitate improbability across the different platforms. So the next slide, please. Uh, yeah. So during the talk, we have defined several industrial needs, and these are uh, depicted here in this slide. So for instance, in the previous interactions with the community, it was identified that uh, platforms such as the di digital marketplaces need to facilitate integration of the data generated either by simulation or experiments, and this data is usually um, available or scattered across different repositories, and if by doing so, by facilitating this integration, the marketplace will support building, for instance, data sets that can be used to um, then uh, uh, drive new uh, data-based uh, approach. Another, um, another industrial need is, for instance, to facilitate interoperability based the, on the use of common standards, so common representation and unified representation of the data and service. And this can facilitate, uh, again, the um, data sharing across uh, platforms and also users and facilitate uh, an effective data exchange between the simulation tools that are available, but also the databases that are uh, available and that can be assessed by um, the various digital marketplaces. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the state of the heart, so uh, several digital marketplaces already use uh, ontologies to represent this service in op and operations. And this table here tries to uh, summarize the type of information that is captured by the ontologies used by the marketplace that we have uh, communicated with so far within the Onto Commons. And you can see that most marketplaces use ontologies to describe the domain knowledge. So they essentially use domain ontologies. And only uh, DOM 4.0 ontologies the, uh, the data sets, and few of them is ontologies to represent the infrastructure. Um, it is also important to mention that some marketplaces do not use yet top level ontology. So it's also important to raise the, the, the awareness about the benefits of using top level ontologies. And this is what we are doing uh, within the Onto Commons project. Um, another uh, important information concerning the state of the art is the fact that in the past there have been uh, uh, already some actions that tried to facilitate the communication of different marketplaces and also the development of a unified ontology, which is this EVMPO, but due to the duration of the marketplaces and different levels of development, this is currently uh, not active, but one of the recommendations based on interactions with the community has, has been to uh, continue such kind of interactions. So next slide, please. Next slide, yes. In terms of the gaps, we identified, for instance, the lack of communication between um, marketplace to develop uh, a common ontology. So as I mentioned, there have been some actions in the past, but due to the efforts that are required, this is something that is still missing a, a, um, 
a very clear way to go in order to facilitate this common development. There have been also lack of tools and methodologies to facilitate the alignment between the ontologies that are used by the different platforms. Um, and it has also been identified that it's important to facilitate the communication between the marketplaces, platforms, and top-level ontologies such as EMO, because as I mentioned, some of them uh, are not uh, using our uh, top-level ontologies. Uh, next uh, slide. Yeah, in terms of uh, the the definition of uh, uh, success, this slide essentially lists the aspects that we can lead uh, to the success of uh, the collaboration between the marketplace and in, in the end to facilitate uh, achieving interoperability across the different platforms. First thing is to define the synergies or determine the synergies between the marketplace and understand how they can lead to a further co collaborative development. We also identified that it's important to create a common space for sharing uh, uh, the updates of each uh, marketplace, reuse the ontologies and integrate and, and merge these ontologies, um, and share the documents and technologies which are open among the, the marketplace. And again, uh, an important aspect is to um, share uh, across the marketplaces the fundamental concepts uh, and the small, uh, the small mid-level ontologies that are uh, used. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, as recommended actions in the current uh, um, roadmap, uh, three have been identified. So the first one has been to uh, uh, create more demonstrations or and well-defined demonstrations of the existing marketplace that describe uh, the domain of the marketplace and how they use ontologies and how they are used, APIs and so on. Develop a common global ontology framework for the marketplace. So again, this has been uh, um, an action that has been, been recommended uh, during the interactions with the community and to uh, keep establishing and improving the link between the various uh, marketplaces to ensure interoperability across these platforms. And next slide, please. Yes, so re with regards to the um, the, the recommended actions. My in my conclusion, as you saw, a lot of a lot of the aspects that I mentioned needs uh, to be discussed and requires really engagement from the community. And uh, in April, we are uh, having this uh, upcoming workshop, which will have sessions on the digital marketplaces, and there we'll be addressing some of the aspects that I mentioned in the previous slides. So the gaps, um, the um, the recommended actions and also the industrial needs. And that's all from my side. Thank you, Joanna, for presenting us uh, this part. And we are coming to the last chapter or last presentation for the, in the webinar today. Uh, it's on innovation and perspectives and will be given by Michaela Magas from Industry Commons Foundation. Thank you, Nadja. Um... Oh, we are missing some slides. Oh, here we go. So um, when it comes to the impact that the auto commons ecosystem has on inf innovation, we it's useful to actually refer to Pisano and his definition of the different types of innovation. So apart from routine incremental innovation, um, he actually distinguishes radical innovation, which builds new technologies for existing business models, disruptive innovation, which builds new kinds of business models with existing technologies, and architectural innovation, as he refers to it, which actually uh, disrupts in both ways, or rather, it is both radical and disruptive innovation at the same time. Now, these present challenges to organizations because, of course, they rather um, disturb the existing patterns and uh, the existing um, dynamics inside an organization. So, for example, radical innovation can destabilize existing technologies in the sense that they need updating, and disrupted innovation um, may 
uh, actually uh, disrupt the dynamics of uh, interaction with existing customers and existing income streams. And of course, uh, that's a huge risk for organizations. So when we consider how the Onto Commons ecosystem can generate new kinds of types of innovation, we also need to consider the kinds of patterns that it will disrupt within organizations. And we need to actually manage innovation in a in a uh, uh, in a very agile way and in a, in a in a way that actually allows the company to shift their organizational le learning patterns and uh, manage knowledge in new ways next slide please so when we look at the concept of the industry commons that features the in a data interoperability as the key top layer that's driven by the onto commons ecosystem it also needs to connect to other enabling horizontals that span across verticals. Um, and that include uh, financial transactions, uh, things like intellectual property tracking. So these are all enablers in, in, a, in a common ecosystem. Um, legislation or regulation that's embedded in the system, environmental monitoring, corporate social responsibility, things like uh, uh, responsible AI and ethics, and of course, societal values. When I say societal values, we can, for example, consider um, inclusion as one of our societal values, and therefore we would want to embed strategies on how we manage data biases and um, how we actually uh, make sure that the the interoperability is actually reflected in in this type of a value. Um, so uh, these all of these are very much connected. Now, if we go to the next slide, uh, we look at uh, the preconditions. For setting something like this up, so um, the this we are looking at this in terms of enterprise integration, of course, and uh, when it comes to looking at it from this holistic perspective, uh, and we are dealing with things like what we refer to as open innovation, uh, we need to be sufficiently transparent to allow actors to be well informed and make uh, the right kind of decisions. Uh, so we're not talking about uh, being transparent to the point of uh, uh, open innovation being a free for all, but to actually uh, ha give stakeholders sufficient control to make the uh, well informed decisions. We need to be technologically harmonized uh, in a sense that uh, uh, the onto commons ecosystem uh, is is uh, uh, presenting and also in terms of uh, data formats and all of the other uh, technological uh, 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 components of the ecosystem so this is something that's obviously a, a great lot of work that's 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 being done uh, by different European initiatives and but also uh, we need to uh, be effectively supported by the responsible, societal and environmental parameters embedded this, uh, in the system as, as shown above. So if we go to the next uh, slide. So it's worth actually referring to Vicar Panetto and Molina, who mapped out the progress into system of systems in terms of these four qualities, autonomy, belonging, connectivity, and diversity. And in terms of moving the state of the art forward across the main ecosystem, uh, updates um, uh, these uh, four qualities. Um, autonomy is, of course, important in a pluralistic approach that we have just um, uh, presented. Um, what it does allow is for the increase of modeling of individual components. So we can actually project different kind of, we can result, it can result in different dynamic states and we can actually um, uh, create different sort of potential new use case scenarios which allow us for individual components to become more modular and adaptable. Belonging um, is something that in a decentralized system um, is uh, important in terms of being able to see the component the way that it, it is tracked across the ecosystem. So um, the uh, the overall purpose, of course, uh, the supra purpose is that we all want to be part of a joint ecosystem because um, it, it allows us to optimize and it allows us to improve our operations. But the important sense of belonging comes from being able to track oneself inside the ecosystem. Connectivity is all pervasive in a sense that when we are dealing with meanings and relationships, uh, we are not talking anymore about uh, nodes and synapses in the way that we would, for instance, refer to it in IoT. And therefore, we are now creating a possibility for multiple uh, dimensions in which we create value networks. 
And diversity of capabilities, of course, is key in across the main uh, ecosystem because it allows us to um, uh, identify gaps, to identify opportunities, create innovation uh, breakthroughs. Um, uh, so inherently, the modules uh, are would be ecosystem facing so that we can actually model and couple uh, solutions on the fly. Um, modeling, of course, being key um, uh, in uh, a, a key feature of this, uh, of, of the value of this overall ecosystem. So if we go to the next page, and what is the definition of success? So if we manage to create breakthrough information, uh, inf innovation as a, um, uh, on top of this uh, data interoperability layer, um, this is um, uh, the first time ever that breakthrough innovation is an integrated in a uh, and in an ecosystem rather than happening in the sidelines as it has been um, uh, up till now. Uh, so this is actually quite a significant uh, breakthrough for innovation strategy in general. Um, we have an example use case on the left just to illustrate this point that data sets from different domains can now be combined and modeled into a third data set that can indicate new market possibilities. Um, and because we are embedded in a, an ecosystem and we have this, uh, they have sufficient openness to be able to inform data proprietors of the results, uh, we can then flag up the new market possibilities in order to enable them to uh, make the right decisions. So this is unprecedented, um, uh, thanks to an onto commons ecosystem. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is now uh, based on these, this framework, we are now looking at the onto commons demonstrators, the results from those demonstrators, looking at the best practice for expansion, their expansion across domains, uh, potential novel business models that are emerging. Uh, the role of interfaces has already been mentioned and it will be explored at greater length in our horizontal workshops in Oslo uh, in a week-long activity. Uh, and uh, of course, it's not only important uh, to look at what's happening inside Onto Commons with all of the different 22 use cases, but also to position the Onto Commons ecosystem with all of the other activities that we are doing in different projects in terms of developing systems for the tracking of intellectual property across domains or for environmental monitoring, for example. Um, so ensure that the Onto Commons ecosystem is pervasive as something that is a layer of interoperability that uh, um, is on top of all of these other horizontal enablers. So this will be all from me for now. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela, for the last presentation of, uh, of this webinar today. Um, I would kindly ask also Hedi to join. Are you? Yes. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, so just uh, short information what will happen is next uh, with this roadmap. Um, so this is the first version which is presented now. We, we work um, um, on, on the updated version that will be finally published latest in October 2023. Everybody is really um, uh, invited to participate, to, to help us uh, with this document. Um, you will have um, opportunity also to fill in surveys on each of these presentations today. We would like to have your feedback. And if you follow the link, uh, which you see on the screen, uh, you will go to the website of Onto Commons, uh, where you can uh, provide your opinion, your feedback in the case that you still think um, uh, that uh, we forgot to mention something that is relevant. We have several workshops until the end of this project, and uh, we will for sure invite you in the next weeks uh, about all of them. The first one is mentioned. Um, it will be from the 6th, uh, 4th to 6th of April in Berlin. That was uh, by Joanna presented uh, before. The next one will be a large workshop that will include all topics of Onto Commons um, that were also presented today. It will be from the 13th until 16th of June in Oslo. And you are 
invited to participate um, optimal in person if, if possible. Uh, and then we plan to have one additional um, workshop in September on the top reference ontologies, top level ontologies, and uh, this information will be provided to the community. Uh, still, still uh, we, we didn't fix the date, but we know that in September it will be organized. All of these events uh, will for sure um, discuss uh, all these topics and will contribute to the final version of Onto Commons Roadmap. And there will be also one training on the use of an Onto Commons ecosystem. And uh, this is going to be organized uh, by ANIT institution, by the group um, uh, supporting HEDI, Kare from ANIT, and also uh, by Trust AT uh, company. Um, are there any questions that you, does anyone from participant want to, to say something or, or to give us directly now feedback on what you heard today? Uh, there is, of course, opportunity to ask a question and uh, discuss with presenters today. If not, um, then please follow the link and uh, contribute to the next version of the document. Uh, I, I see that there are a couple of questions just now. Uh -huh. yes, I think that there is uh, uh, two questions, one from Michael and one from Rahim. So uh, let's say, start by the easiest one by Rahim. Yeah, I mean, there is the, for sure, this is what we are expecting, is that uh, external uh, stakeholders and external experts to uh, join Onto Commons as experts and uh, provide their feedbacks and contribution. So please go uh, to the Onto Commons website, uh, register as expert, join the uh, focused area, and also contribute by answering to the um, to the different surveys on the roadmap and provide your opinion. So it will be included, and we are looking for insights from the community. And also, you can join us for the upcoming uh, workshops and to provide your input and. Uh, uh, it will be, uh, I mean, uh, agree that uh, all of you at, uh, I mean, join on the comments. For Michael uh, questions, I, I see that Michaela is, is motivated and excited to answer. So please go ahead. I always like the hard question. <laughs> so Michael, thank you very much for this question. I'm just going to read it for the benefit of all. So considering that the in inverted commas, younger generation will be distinguished users of the interoperability-based technology that is being developed. Would we be able to line out how they will be able to profit from our developments, for example, in some use case in 2035? Well, I mean, I can offer you one potential uh, uh, thing to contemplate, and then you can maybe uh, uh, get back to us with your ideas on this. Um, our vision of this is that where we are enabling this uh, really uh, uh, high level interoperability, um, something that is not as volatile as APIs, for example, that have been used so far with uh, uniquely kind of used to create interoperable systems, they're very high maintenance. But actually, when you think about APIs, um, uh, uh, startups and SMEs have been actually key in, in creating application programming interfaces um, and bridging domains in that sense. So in this new landscape, the way that we envisage, uh, for example, uh, let's say young developers to be able to contribute is to actually start creating algorithms and ways to model data from different domains and to be able to uh, create new kinds of pointers to emerging markets, use cases, procurement, for example, strategies where when you model new type of um, uh, use case combining, let's say, uh, public and private data, 
and you get, let's say, materials suppliers data and you model it in this new scenario, you can actually start to infer what is the best use case for a particular type of material or which is the type of material it might create the best kind of conditions uh, with for this particular application. Um, they can embed themselves then into the value network because they're adding value to the um, uh, to all of the different exchanges and interactions. So in typical kind of commercial terms, you could add a percentage value on top of the, the result if the result is valuable to the either the procurement, uh, the procurer or the uh, background IP provider or the uh, potential new use case. Does that make sense at all as an answer? Is it something worth at least investigating and contemplating on? Thank you. Thank you, Mikael, Welcome. for your re reply. Um, with this, uh, if I, I just see there are some additional questions. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. We Sounds great, uh, said Mikhail. Okay. That was reply. Uh, so thanks a lot uh, to all participants in this uh, webinar. Uh, we will have the slides available online for all, all the register for this event. Thanks to all speakers for preparing these slides um, and all effort that you do did also in, in writing of the roadmap. Uh, not only present people worked on it, uh, the whole consortia and, and external experts as well. So thanks a lot. I think it's it's a very relevant outcome of this project, and uh, by the end of the project, still there is some time to to contribute and to help us uh, to uh, to to finalize and uh, provide the final version until the end of the project. So thanks to everybody. Um, Hedy, do you want to say some words as well? Just thanking all of you for attending and looking forward to, to collaborate in the next period of the project. Yes, events, exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, for Trusted T to organize this webinar and uh, have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.